The Final Fantasy VII Remake is finally here! And we have a lot to talk about. What's up everybody? It's Katie and I am here to talk about the long-awaited Final Fantasy VII Remake. Holy moly, we've waited a long time for this one. Possibly one of the most anticipated games of the past, I mean, decade easily. I know uh, for me, it's been like top three status. Uh, it's finally out. It's been out for a while. I have played the shit out of it. A lot of people have. And I thought, why not make a review of it, right? I did one for uh, Kingdom Hearts Remind and it seemed to go over pretty well. It's fun. I used to write reviews pro professionally, so I thought I'd try it again. Um, so I want to talk about the game, give you some of my thoughts, because I think it's a really, really fascinating game. Um, if like, if nothing else, it's a certainly a uh, very fascinating game. Um, and I want to add a few disclaimers before basically we start. Uh, number one, this video will c eventually, eventually contain spoilers. I believe this is kind of a, a game that is very difficult to kind of go into, to critique without going into spoilers. Um, so there will be a little bit of that. I will give a full warning before they start. They will not start right away. I want to give some stuff for people who are looking for a review without that kind of thing. Uh, second, uh, it will be basically unscripted. Um, that's how I prefer to uh, do things. I like to just kind of get in front of my mic and blab. So get in front of the camera and just blurt it all out. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I have played through the entire game. I actually uh, am about a quarter of the way now through hard mode. Uh, just to give you an idea of my perspective, um, I've played uh, almost all the other Final Fantasy games, a good chunk. Um, Seven was always like my second favorite. Uh, really, really love it, uh, especially in terms of gameplay. I love the original. I love things like the materia system. I love like the world, um, the characters, just the aesthetic of it all. The story was always just okay for me, and I'll go into that. But uh, also with this new one, um, I played about uh, my playthrough came out to like I think 45 hours because I tried to do every single thing. I, I did every side quest. Um, I tried to do like every single. Uh, VR mission slash Colosseum thing. You'll find out when you play all that jazz. I did all that because um, I really enjoyed the gameplay. So I guess that's a little spoiler so far about my review. But but basically, uh, when you have a game like this that is so heavily anticipated for so long, a remake of a game that changed the industry is like an iconic video game, there's a lot to expect. And I think it's fair that people had pretty high expectations for this one. And in terms of my view on everything, I came away with a very kind of complicated, but like, in my opinion, kind of fascinating view on the game. Um, I think it is simultaneously one of the best games I've ever played, while also at times, kind of being one of the most disappointing. A little bit. And I, I, I'll get into that. I'll get into that. But I feel like the best way to talk about a game like this, because I feel like it's a game that is at times so incredibly good that you can it, you, you forget about uh, some of its flaws. Um, if, you know, if, you, if you're noticing those kind of things. Um, they're still there, but like when it's a game that when it rises high, it rises so incredibly high and it's like you feel like you're playing one of the best games you've ever played. At least that was my my take on it. But I feel like because of this kind of dichotomy of like conflicted or like, you know, oh my God, I'm blown away versus like, this is a little disappointing. I feel like the best way to do a review for this game, uh, at least for me, is not necessarily to go into it detail by detail, but just to kind of literally divide it into two halves, the good and the bad. And how, how I viewed it, what I thought was fantastic about the game, 
and what I thought wasn't so fantastic. Um, because I don't believe any game is perfect, and you know, every I, I, I'm okay with critiquing critiquing games, and I did have a few issues, but basically, I feel like that's the best way to go about explaining this one. And I'd like to start with the good. And I'm very, 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 very happy to say that there's a lot of it. And it's really, really, really good. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, in my opinion, the remake, feels kind of like a, a masterpiece that's being obscured. Like, you can see it there. It's totally... At times, you get clear glimpses of what an absolutely almost perfect game it is. And then you're kind of distracted from it a little bit. But what do I mean by, like, masterpiece, right? So, obviously, a remake of one of the most notorious games of all time. You have some of the most iconic characters returning. You have Cloud, you have Tifa, you have Barrett, you have Sephiroth, you have Aerith, you have all these characters, right? And there's a lot of things that Square had to get right. Uh, to satisfy people. In my opinion, the things that they had to get most right, they absolutely knocked out of the park. And I'd, I want to start with what I think is probably the best thing about this entire game, and I think many would agree, is the characterization. <laughs> um, any worry that any of these old favorite characters were not going to basically live up to our expectations or kind of match what how they were portrayed in the original is so blown out now that I, I, I don't even have a sliver of a worry about any of it anymore and it's it's so so good so you you have a game like this and you Final Fantasy 7 obviously has had more other entries in the franchise not just even games sometimes and throughout the years, there's kind of been like the perceived like personal, the perceived personalities of these characters and like kind of what people view from them as the outside, almost the flanderized versions, if you will. And I think a lot of people, myself included, were a little worried that they might have done that. Would Cloud just kind of be the quote unquote like emo brooding character that everyone always criticized him as? Will they... Will they basically take the the audiences like an outside audience's perspective of these characters? Will Aerith just be nothing but you know the 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 completely innocent, sweet, like humble girl that like a lot of people think she is? And it couldn't be further from the truth. The characterization in this game is so 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 incredibly good. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Every character is exactly how they should be. Tifa is that same, like, super supportive kind of girl next door, but badass, like, babe that we all love. Aerith is, is just as sassy as she was in the original. A lot of people forgot that that's kind of how she was in the ori original. She's got that sassy side to her. Um, Barrett is, like, a lot of people have, a, have problems with Barrett, but I just think his portrayal in this is just so great. You can't not love him. Um... They especially really kind of play up more of his relationship with Marlene and just like his point of view on everything and how he explains it. And you get, he's one of the most passionate characters in the game. And I think that's why he's also one of my favorites is because he, he acts on emotion and that's like really interesting. And then to me, maybe the most impressive of all is actually the main boy himself, Cloud. I was so impressed with the, with, how Cloud is portrayed in this. He is both, he starts off as you would expect. He starts off very standoffish and, you know, like as he did in the original. And of course, as characters do and as good writing does, he changes a little, but not like too much because obviously this is only the first entry in this in the franchise, but he like, it never seems like he's going too far in one direction. And it's so subtle and it's so perfect. And the voice acting for him is just, Th these you will see these characters come to life in a way that you have never seen any other revisit into something iconic ever ever do like like whenever you see someone like something like 
come back, you know, like after a while, like a reboot, like a reboot or like a, uh, you know, other season of like something. It's, they almost always botch the characters and stuff like that, right? And I was like, of course they're gonna get something wrong, right? Nothing. It's, it's, it's amazing what Square has done. Every character is so on point. And I think few will argue with that, honestly. You will fall in love with these characters if it's your first time. And you will fall in love with them all over again more than ever if it's your 50th time. You know what I mean? So good. And that translates also to things like all of the iconic moments. Second best thing about the game, by far in my opinion, is every time it follows the original narrative, it is just, it's so good, it's its almost always better, even. And that was something that I personally always felt was the greatest, the most exciting thing about this Final Fantasy VII remake. Is I always thought that the Final Fantasy VII story had a great foundation for a great story. It was like some really good ideas and, and some, on paper, like really good, and it still has some great moments. But it was limited at the time due to things like localization and technology limitation and stuff like that. And so I was like, okay, a remake is the absolute perfect chance to show the full capabilities of that story, to really let it flourish more than ever before and make it like exactly how we pictured it in our heads. That's like what the best remakes do, right? Like what we pictured in our heads so long ago. And there has never been an example to my mind in all of gaming remakes, and it's not even close probably, than when this game actually recreates some of these iconic moments things like um the scene uh with in the park i don't want to go too, into too much for people who have never played the final Fantasy VII before scene in the park uh something that happens involving sector seven you know all these iconic moments right and they are recreated so brilliantly every time this game follows the original story it's so good that you'll you'll cry. Uh, like if you if you certainly if you have that nostalgia for the first one, you'd have to be so cynical not to like just be so like touched by some of these moments and how well they've recreated them. In terms of just two of the most important things that needed to get get right, in my opinion, it's just it completely blows out of the water. I was awestruck at this, and mostly a lot of the reason because of this is because it has one of the best like cinematic directions I've ever seen for a video game, period. Possibly the best ever for a JRPG. The whole thing feels like you're watching a movie, but never like wh where you're like forgetting that you're playing a game, which is important, but just the, the, the production quality of a movie. Um, things like angles and, and editing and just it and the music. Oh my God, the music, so good. It's so, so cinematic and spectacular. It, it's it's by far all of the best parts of the game, right? But it doesn't stop there. It Because the game, like, almost hits every single right note. It doesn't stop there. Um, the gameplay, right? Going into this, going into the other section of the game. The gameplay, I found the battle system to be uh, incredibly fun, incredibly addictive. Uh, a really, really brilliant marriage between uh, turn-based and... Um, action. Uh, I was worried it would kind of feel a little clunky. I personally, just to go into a little bit, I personally felt like the targeting system was a little wonky at times and the camera got a little weird. Sometimes it would like change targets like on me when I was like really like clearly not trying to do that. And I think sometimes the game's a little bit harsh on like openings for when you can use your abilities. One thing that is kind of interesting and I like is that it actually punishes you for the combat system punishes you for using these abilities that you have in the game at inopportune times because care because enemies can interrupt you they can stop you from using those moves and you'll still use your magic and everything I like that I think it gets a little too harsh at the end with it there's like small small openings and it was a little annoying but other than that it's it's so it, um, being able to like kind of fully utilize every character and every character feels so unique. Tifa, for example, is like the stagger queen in this one. Oh my God, she's so good. She's possibly even like better than Cloud, right? Barret's for ranged. Aerith can be like an amazing black mage. That's how I played her. 
the characters are each diverse, which is so important. And it's just, there's, there's this certain satisfaction you feel from like transitioning instantly from wailing on an enemy as hard as you can right into instantly going into your strategy and pausing and like going to your spells and ability. It's this wonderful, like just kind of clashing that like is constantly like flipping over, flipping like your brain in different, in like two different directions. Right. And I don't know. I personally love that and having to like think both in the real time and think both kind of ahead of time strategy wise. It, it, it makes sure that it never like gets dull. Um, the best probably example of when the battle system comes to like fruition is, is in the boss battles. They're absolutely spectacular. They're some of the best examples of how to do boss battles because they're like multi-phase and they change their enemy patterns and their weak points. It's so good. There's so much work that's been put into this and it shows. I mean, it's like 100 gigabytes or whatever. Like... Um, the game has some visual issues. I personally don't care. I never, I don't care about graphics, but it's there. It's, it's worth noting. There's definitely some texture issues, but other than that, it's like, it's just, you'll never not be blown away when the game is like at its absolute high. There's just so many tear jerking moments. They recreate all of these iconic moments so, so beautifully. If you are an FF7 fan, if you ever even mildly like the original, I just like, it's, it's going to blow you away at times. In particular, I think the first half of the game is when it's absolutely as strongest. I think chapter one is honestly one of the best ones. Uh, the entirety of Wall Market was my favorite part of the game. The changes they've done are brilliant. It's, it's just, it's so good. The voice acting is absolutely on point. Uh, there isn't like the... The, the performance for Sephiroth is a little awkward, but other than that, there's, like, no bad performance, in my opinion. They all just nail it. They're perfect. You can tell that Square thought about every single thing that makes Final Fantasy VII work, that made it work. Everything, the feel, the look, Midgar comes to life in a way, like, you've, like, never, you always wanted it to, but... I can't even imagine what it feels like for people who, like, are huge diehard FF7 fans. I always liked it. It's always been one of my favorites, but I only, like, played it twice. Um, and even then, I was, like, feeling it hardcore. Um, they do things like they expand other characters, too. Uh, they expand the other members of Avalanche. It's all so good because it's so important narratively, too, right? Because in order to get like a bigger feel for what you're fighting for, because a large part of the story of Midgar fall, you know, revolves around what these people are trying to fight for. In order to get that like kind of sense of weight and consequence, you want to care for these characters. And they knew that. And it's, it's brilliant. Like I can think of very few like issues. I even like was thinking of in my head in the first half of this game, I was so blown away. It, it, in terms of gameplay, it's nearly, like, perfect, in my opinion. Uh, it's, in terms of, like, just production value, it's absolutely, like, a 10 out of 10. It, in terms of what it had to get right, it's, it's like, a masterpiece. I, I really am that blown away by the game. However, however, it is not perfect. And now I will transition into the bad. As I said before, Final Fantasy VII Remake is like an obscured masterpiece. It is, it's like you can tell you're playing a masterpiece, but the game is for whatever reason, constantly distracting you from that fact. And, not, and it's because of two two major factors the only two real issues i touched a couple on, i touched on a couple others earlier but these are the only two really really major issues i had with the game and i do think they are absolutely worth noting number one some of the major story changes and in particular one specific plot element and number two probably even worse to my mind the padding when we first found out that this game was going to be a um 
remake of only the Midgar section, there were some worries. Can you justify having a section that was only like four hours in the original become an entire like 35, maybe 40 hour game? Can you do it? Can you do it without making it feel too stretched out? And I admit, it's an absolutely huge challenge. I think in the end, when you play it, at least for me, this game absolutely proves that Midgar can be its own section, can be its own game, but not necessarily its own 35, 40 hour game, at least not with some big problems, because the game absolutely does at times add on completely unnecessary segments and pacing breaking moments, heavy pacing breaking moments that extend the runtime or game time, if you will. Um, Padding is probably the worst offense. I can think of several sections of the game in which, well, for starters, we'll talk about some of the smaller ways it pads itself, right? Uh, there are things like character, your character kind of, Cloud often walks slower than he should. Uh, you're constantly uh, going through like little uh, slipping through cracks. Um, those, that, that, that common uh, game trope nowadays where you're walking with characters and they're just talking. Lots of little moments that slow down the gameplay. A lot of those are hidden load times. So that's not always the case. But there are definitely some moments that are like, does this really need to be as slow as it is? And it strangely enough reminded me a lot of Uncharted. But in Uncharted, it kind of works a little bit more because Uncharted is such a fast paced game that's always moving fast and always like constantly the next action set piece. So you need that tiny little break to catch your breath in between. You need those slow moments. Final Fantasy VII Remake, is a bit of a slower story. It's a little more grounded. It's not like constant, constant Indiana Jones style epic. So you don't need it to slow down as much as it does in this. It's not terrible in terms of gameplay at all. Like it's barely an issue, but it is there. But where it really, really bothered me personally was when the story would kind of come to, it would be, it would be just hitting hard, so hard. Like it would be like, hitting like it would it would you know the the tension the pacing would be climbing up 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 exciting moments you just like an exciting revelation all this sort of stuff and then it comes to a screeching halt where for no reason they throw you in like some sort of gameplay or filler story section that just kills the pacing some people don't care about that stuff as much. Some people care more about like the moments, but for me, pacing is so important. I don't know, like when you're, when you're, when you're making me excited about something, I don't want to suddenly have to like, like forget about it for an hour. You know what I mean? Like, no, I was, I was into that, you know? And there's a couple moments like that. And this is when I'm going to start going into spoilers for the rest of the video and it's going to get into heavy spoilers so please if you have not played the game i highly recommend you do before continuing this section okay here we go <laughs> there are numerous examples like i can't just kind of talk about it um so lightly i have to kind of go into like examples right so there's i can think of i can think of a couple um there are examples of really good padding and filler like there's a section where you go to um, <clears throat> Jesse's home. And that's great because it expands upon Jesse's character. It's a cute little moment. You And because Jesse dies later, it's really important that you kind of like feel more for her. Great stuff. Awesome stuff. I love that. Love that. But then there's a difference between stuff like that and padding where it's more, why is this even here? Where, where it literally just stops the story. And, and there's a couple moments of this, right? Uh, there's an earlier segment where Cloud is, uh, the story's kind of about to move into its next uh, big chapter and Cloud is randomly approached by these hoodlums and he has to go to this uh, random area and he fights them. And it's supposed to be like a little tease of like wall market, but it's not, it doesn't need to really be there. I don't think it was in the original. If it was, I'll totally take that back, but it's an, it, that's a smaller example, right? But then you have bigger ones, and they mostly come in the later half of the game, which was when I started getting more frustrated. Um, we all remember the plate fall, right? It's recreated really, really well here, with one exception, but I'll talk about that. 
the plate fall is a major tragic moment in this game. It's it's super sad. It's the moment the stakes start getting so higher. It's it's that transition into their their final goal for the end of the of the Midgar section. It's really exciting. It's really dramatic. It's really sad. You have that. You have this wonderful section afterward where you kind of run through uh, Midgar and you see the effects the plate fall has had on people, and it's so good. And then. For for no real reason, they return to Midgar, or they return to Sector 7 to check if Wedge is alive. And I'm like, okay, that's okay, I guess. And then you find out he is. And it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of exciting. The story's getting, like, ramping up again. And, and then for no reason, <laughs> the characters are about to go go to him, and they fall into a random... You, f you literally fall into a random sh underground Shinra facility and have to go through about 40 minutes, maybe 30 minutes of gameplay and no, like, story at all. It's completely pointless. It, you're, it, it's right when, like, things are getting good and then you have to do just a random part that has no consequence whatsoever. They try to write, like, a reason why, but it's not... It doesn't work at all. It's just, like, kind of frustrating because you're... It doesn't need to be there, you know? That was bad, but then it gets kind of even worse. Uh, you all remember the iconic moment when President Shinra is killed in the original, right? Uh, it happens again here. It's a great part. Sef we see Sephiroth, his, his final reveal. Like, it's a really exciting moment. And then for no reason, you have to then fight like a 10-minute Genova fight. And it's... It's like, no, like, d that's not necessary. The Rufus fight's already there. You don't need to do that. It doesn't need to be there. Like, some people will say, okay, I had fun with it. It doesn't matter. But for me, for someone who just loves storytelling and stuff like that, that was a huge problem because it's just, it, it just kind of stops everything. And, like, it's not the worst example. The worst example ever for me was Chapter 17, which I found incredibly frustrating it was the only part of the game that i legitimately was like oh i don't like this at all i just don't like like i like wasn't having fun not even having fun it was it is toward the end of the shinra base uh it it, it typically when you get toward the end of your story you want the pacing to not let up because you're getting toward the end that's when your story is climbing 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 and then hits its you know its uh apex and that's when it like really boom that's that's how you typically tell the story especially in like an action adventure story like this and it's going in that direction they sephiroth is revealed uh there's some major plot revelations it starts getting really really good and then Aerith, um Aerith reveals who like who she really is you learn a little bit more about this other plot element uh they're ready to leave shinra hq it's like oh hell yeah let's do this We've got some major story. Let's get out of here. It's it's right where the original was, where they're in the original they get captured and then they go and then they go into this room and Aerith tells them all these things. It's a little different in this, but similar thing. They're ready to leave. And then you have to do as the story's getting so good, you then have to do an hour long, maybe not quite that long, section in Hojo's lab. And there's like no story. It's just endless fights, switching characters, and it, it's like, you're, I was so winded out at that point. I was like, it, it just, it puts everything to a screeching halt. It's, it's, in my opinion, an example of how to never do pacing, especially not toward the end when things are supposed to be getting so exciting and, you know, moving. There was a Hojo Lab section in the original, but it was incredibly short, and it was like only... It only revolved really around kind of Red 13's reveal and some scenes that are in this. And they're in this. And it's like, that's exactly when it should stop. But for for whatever reason, all of Chapter 17 is just completely unnecessary. And the game has moments like this. It does. And I get them feeling like they had to make it longer. I do. I don't think that this was a case of, of like laziness or, like, um, I don't at all think this was, like, a cynical thing. Like, oh, we'll just throw in some random crap and th they won't tell the di I don't think at all. I really don't. I think that there was an earnest attempt. And I think that they, they probably felt that they had to make the game longer to satisfy people. And I get that because people 
would have probably complained if it wasn't quite as long, but I personally feel like you could take you could easily take out the five hours of like padding of this game and it would just be a better game. It's not a huge deal if it's a little bit shorter because it's a quality over quantity thing, right? Some of the best JRPGs ever made are only like 20 hours long. Um, but it's there and I, I, I have to admit I had a, a, a kind of an issue with it because it's a game that is otherwise so incredibly good that it's just like upsetting when that happens. At least for me, it was like, it was just like, oh no, come on, you were doing so well. Like there, there's such a, a masterpiece of a game underneath all this stuff that doesn't need to be here. And it doesn't stop there because that's gameplay. That's gameplay issues, right? The padding, but the story issues. Well, for starters, there are some story changes. There are some major story changes. Some of them work, some of them don't, in my opinion. Um, I don't want to get like too far into it because that would just be like, we'd be here all day. But like, there's some that I think like, most of them are all like really good, but there are some that I'm like, I don't necessarily know why it had to be that way. But there's really only one, one major story implementation that is just, in my opinion, really, really, really poorly done. And you all probably know where I'm going with this if you have already played the game. But Final Fantasy VII Remake introduces these new uh, um, enemies, so to speak. Uh, I believe they are called the Arbiters of Fate. Uh, they are special. They are essentially magical time ghosts that uh, their kind of duty is to protect the timeline and make sure that things play out the way they are supposed to play out in in the timeline. Uh, in this case, it is things play out the way the original Final Fantasy VII game on PlayStation played out, and the entire reason for their existence is essentially a plot device excuse for why the story can now go in a different direction. Because yes, spoiler alert, by the end of the game, you do find out that it is highly likely, given the, the, the hints, that the story is now going to go in a different direction from the remake. Um, from, I mean, sorry, from the original. Um, I'm not like super bothered by this yet. Cause like, I, we don't know. We don't know yet. We, you can't judge it too, too much yet. I have my worries certainly. Um, because I think that the original again is, is, is such a, is such a great idea for a story. And I think the point of this remake should really just be like, let it come to its full potential. And I think that given the high points of this game, it proves that, that, that works. That like, cause like when you see all the moments from the original in this game, they're all the best parts and they're all like, oh yeah, it's true. Like y you can make something so incredible out of that original story with modern day technology. So it's kind of a little upsetting that it's probably not going to do that. I'll get into the more of that, but I wasn't as frustrated by that. It was more just these things themselves. The time ghosts are this super, uh, esoteric, like out there, really kind of dumb plot device that just, they quite literally get in the way of the plot as it goes on, which is ironic because they're trying to make sure the plot happens. What do I mean by this? All of these favorite iconic moments that you might like have from FF7, some of them are there, but affected now by these time magic time ghosts. And it's like, can you please get out of the way so that like good scenes can happen? It wouldn't be as bad if these things had more of a of a natural implementation into the plot. But the way they're written, they're they're written at first to be like almost invincible. Nobody understands them. Uh, what's even worse is our characters don't even seem to care about them that much for a long time. So it's, it's literally kind of just them going along and then, oh God, those time ghosts are back. Get out of the way. And it's like, it, it eliminates, it, it really weakens some of the strongest moments because they're, they get, they get in the way and it's so obtrusive and just kind of annoying regardless of what their ultimate goal is. 
they they hurt some of these moments. Like, um, it turns out in this timeline, uh, the plate doesn't fall because our characters necessarily fail. The plate falls in this timeline because Cloud was about to stop Rude from dropping the plate, but then magical time ghosts got in his way. It turns out in this timeline, uh, Wedge was like supposed to die these time ghosts he was gonna escape in this one but then the time ghosts like make sure that he dies but then he doesn't actually die and then they just kill him later it's it's really just like bizarre um like there's uh the 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 famous scene where cloud first meets Aerith. it's like obscured by all these time ghosts flying around it's just like it especially doesn't work because Final Fantasy VII, despite being a Final Fantasy game, was always kind of one of the more grounded ones. Yes, it has supernatural elements, of course, but it takes place in a grimy city, you know, people are using, like, guns and, like, people get roughed up and, like, it, it always had a little bit more, like, groundedness to it, if that makes sense. And so, especially the Midgar section, because it's not until later that some of the more, like, crazy supernatural elements are introduced and so since you're going through like this midgar section it's 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 that it's largely that it feels more it feels a little bit more grounded it feels like a little bit more down to earth and then that just makes these magic time ghosts just like stand out and stick out like a sore thumb even even more to my mind if your ultimate goal is to just change the story just change the story don't come up with a super meta really sloppily written like element that is an excuse for changing it. and I'm sure they'll be back I'm sure they'll be back if you had to ask me they're probably like a, a a commentary on on gamers like who can't accept change and new things and I, it's I don't know I feel a little weird about that because I'm like that's kind of showing contempt for your audience but I don't know you could get into that I guess regardless whatever their ultimate goal is i just know that for me they weaken some of these iconic scenes and they get in the way and they're just really poorly written and they're dumb and they don't feel like they belong in final fantasy 7 like at least definitely not in the midgar section um i mean i hate to say it but like it kind of like it kind of feels like something that's more suited for like the kingdom hearts series um not that final fantasy 7 doesn't have those elements but it just, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. They're really, really annoying. I think the game has a golden rule, for me at least, which is whenever these time ghosts appear, that's when things get really bad and really dumb. <laughs> but I'll be curious to see what other people thought. Um, again, regardless of the fact that they are ultimately an excuse for changing the direction of the remake, I just didn't like their implementation. It, like, I, I don't I don't like how... When you have a, a threat that, like, can't even be understood and is so powerful and, and automatic and, like, you, you're dealing with stuff as big as time travel, some of the stakes and tension get lost for me because it's just... It's so far beyond our character's understanding and it's so... In my opinion, it's kind of just, like, it's just such a sloppy way to write it. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Largely, regardless of all of that, it it really is an incredible game. I'm already replaying it because I love the gameplay. I can't, I, I absolutely recommend it. Even if you're new to the completely new to the series, um, it's just such a great game in its own right. It really is. But I do feel like this is kind of just a case of a of an obscured masterpiece. The Final Fantasy VII remake is kind of like. It's kind of like a beautiful, the most beautiful painting you've ever seen, but for no reason there's like coffee stains on it or like somebody smeared some like food crumbs while they were painting it or something. It's like, it's there, but there's like shit in the way to like, that you can't see it. The, the, the core foundation and everything is so strong and it's just, it's such a shame because some of these other elements are just not really that necessary and they're in there and they stick out like a sore thumb and that's where it just gets hurt. But it's not a case where I can just say like anything fundamentally is necessarily like wrong. There are games like that where it's like, okay, those flaws are clear, they're there. This is like a case where it's like, oh, it doesn't even need to be there. It's so, it's so close. 
You could just take all that out. If you just re-released it, just take out some of those. They'll never do that, but and a lot of people probably wouldn't want that, but hey, I'm weird. <laughs> That's my take. Um, That was a lot to talk about. I probably didn't even talk about most of probably what I even wanted to talk about, but it was fun. Uh, overall, I highly recommend the game. Absolutely check it out. Um... I'm going to be playing it, keep playing it. It's 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 really great. It is definitely one of my favorite games from Square recently. I know I critiqued, I know I like criticized it a lot, but that doesn't mean I didn't love it. That doesn't mean I did not enjoy the heck out of it at times. Um, but yeah, like, oh God, this and like Shadowbringers recently, like just some of the, some of the best stuff we've seen. It's definitely one of my newer favorite Final Fantasy games because when it hits, oh boy, does it hit. It will... It will give you goosebumps more than once. Um, it might frustrate you at times, like it did me, but you'll you'll see the brilliance. You'll see the brilliance, in my opinion. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope to do more reviews like this soon. I kind of want to do one on Persona 5 Royal because I've been playing that as well. Um, if you did enjoy and you don't mind my grading voice and you kind of like to my critique, whatever, uh, feel free to give a follow. Um, or subscribe I'm so new to YouTube but like yeah subscribe ring the bell all that stuff um, I also stream uh, twitch.tv slash chrono Katie um, and that chrono Katie is my handle everywhere you can check out all my opinions on all this crud and playing games and being silly and all that jazz but yeah I hope you all have a wonderful day please be sure to give me your thoughts on the game uh, did you feel the same way uh, give me your take I'm always always open for hearing other other opinions like uh, despite the fact that I might like be critical sometimes I love hearing like other people's takes uh it's, it's one of my favorite things to like read about and do so yeah hope you enjoyed have a great day I will see you on the next one bye <laughs>